But at the end of the day, like, if you know that your company could be operating better, then it can. If you are lacking in any one of these pillars, you have a shaky house of cards. With all six, you You have scalable scalable growth. Everything on the back end of the business could move forward without him to the point that they literally had to turn off sales. All right, you beautiful, amazing, talented, and mostly good-looking motherfuckers. I have another amazing session for you. I brought on John Lee, and today we're going to be talking about operations because she is an operations coach that helps agencies scale. And this is one of those things. This is kind of like to me, John, I don't know how you feel about this. This is like the dark side of the business. Everybody loves to post the stripe, stripe screenshots, the look at me, and but nobody talks about like how that all fell apart three months later because they yes. couldn't handle the clients <laughs> or they scaled too fast or you know they were upside down in their cash flow and their teams and all those things. So, firstly, let me just say uh, thank you and welcome for being. <laughs> You're very welcome, and I I couldn't agree more. Right. Like, let's say it like it is. Operations is not sexy. That's okay. It doesn't have to be sexy. It's still necessary. So just because it's not sexy doesn't mean that we don't need to talk about it because all the really unsexy stuff happens in your business when you miss operations. Yeah. And not only that, it's it's, to me, it's where the rubber meets the uh, the road. Like, I feel like uh, most people in this business are just looking for like some kind of side hustle. Can I make 10K a month? Whatever. And there's nothing wrong with that. But if like if you actually want to get to the point where you have a real business that like could potentially even be sold down the road, like it'll be literally fucking impossible to do if you don't have your operations in order. And not only that, but we were kind of just talking like our kind of thing, like hanging in the mountains, hanging in the beach, being in nature. I find if you don't have your operations in order, like that's literally fucking impossible. Totally. Um, Totally. So why don't we why don't we start? Because we were kind of talking about a couple of different people that came to mind for this talk about how yeah. they have operations problems, but they don't know they have operations problems. So let, what are some of the like obvious telltale signs that you got some operational issues that don't look like maybe on the surface level as like operational issues? Yeah, totally. It's such a good question because the problem is that operations touches literally every piece of the business, right? So if you lack operations in sales, it's It's going to look like a sales issue. If you lack operations in marketing, it's going to look like a marketing issue. So how do we determine whether something is truly a sales and marketing problem or an operations problem? Let's start with just what my definition baseline of operations is. Operations is any action required within a business to optimize a company's use of its time, its energy, its money, and its human potential. So at the end of the day, operations is just about maximizing your ROI across these four resources. And you're going to know that you have an operational bottleneck if it feels like you are wasting these four resources. If your time as a CEO is being pulled into the day-to-day, spent on low value activities, doing the things that you know you shouldn't be doing, that's an operational problem. If your energy, like if you are showing up and doing all the things that you hate, in your business, or it feels like your business is an energetic black hole, like you are just dumping energy into this thing. Yeah, right. Like you're just showing up day after day, just grinding against this thing. And you are seeing no movement, right? That's an energy bottleneck. That's an operational bottleneck. Money is the obvious one, right? Like I'm not as profitable as I want to be. I'm not achieving the kind of scalable and sustainable growth I want. Like maybe we're having these huge revenue bursts, but then we're either roller coastering or we're hitting this kind of plateau. Um, And then human potential, if your team, pretty much if your team is bugging you, if your team is coming to you all the time, if they are constantly asking you the same questions, if you're like, why can't these people think for themselves? That's an operational issue, you're underutilizing your human potential. So what we're going to dive into today, Frankie, is like more specifically, how does this stuff break down within a company? But at the end of the day, like, if you know that your company could be operating better then it can. And there's an operational bottleneck at work there. We just have to double click on it and figure out exactly what's going on. Yeah, I love actually what you just said. So I was I wasn't putting on a little Zelda music for us just to build some ambiance here. (laughs) But, uh, you know, um, one of the telltale signs for me is is if you handle stuff differently every time. So like you mentioned, the sales and the the marketing kind of things. And if if you have a sales process that kind of just like, well, the owner will schedule a call and and we'll take the call and see how it goes and maybe send a proposal. And it's a little bit different each time. Like that's actually an yep. operational issue. And I was listening totally. to uh, something by a good friend of mine named Michael Mogul. And he said uh, they've built a $50 million per year video editing 
um, agency, mostly in the legal space, but they do a few other niches as well. And he said, you know, anybody who's been in this business longer than five minutes has had a good idea. And the operation side of it is actually executing on that idea. Like, how do you, how do you, you know, he's talking about a podcast. Like, so how do you actually get the guest on? How do you record it? Right. What right. tool do you use to do that? What's the editing? How do you put in the intro? Where do you post it? What are the hashtags? What are the titles? And all of that on the surface is operation or behind the surface, I should say, is operational stuff. But it looks like, sure. hey, just make a podcast and record a cool idea and that's it. But if you don't have you know, some sort of structure. And he's like, and that's just one little thing we do in our business. We got about a hundred more of those. And so even yes. like the marketing endeavors are all like boring operational processes behind the scenes. And they look yep. like, cre- you know, like, oh, I had this really creative show, but in reality, it's just like boring shit done yeah. time after yeah. time. Um, well, here's the problem, right? Because that's a perfect example of like, it's it's one piece of a hundred across a business and it's still getting done. This is why most people don't know they have an operational issue because the podcast still eventually gets out. The sale still gets made. The marketing campaign still goes out, right? Like the things are still getting done. It's just a matter of whether they're getting done at 20% efficiency, 50% efficiency, or 120% efficiency, yeah. right? That's where operations plays. You're gonna run a business with or without operations. It's just going to be so painful and like, like dragging a ball and chain behind you or it's going to feel like you're on this like magical roller coaster and you can barely keep up with it. The yeah. difference is operations. How quickly do you want to get there? How frictionlessly do you want to get there? And how much do you want to enjoy the ride? Yeah. Amen to that. Because, you know, I do a lot of consulting and I kind of wrote the other day. There are two different agencies I'm consulting that are uh, like just a hair under 200,000. They're like, you know, in the mm-hmm. 175-ish um, per month kind of yep. uh, zone. And and I, I don't want to name names because because, uh, you know, like I've been in I've been both of them. So this is not yeah, like a, you've been there. <laughs> I've But one of them, it's like what I call the pure chaos agency. where like mm. they're like, man, these people don't know what they're doing. Blah, blah, blah. It's just chaos. Stuff's coming at us. They're asking all questions, blah, blah, blah. And the second one, the meetings are more like I'm kind of bored here. Like, uh, is, I don't know. Mm. There's like it seems like there's nothing to do in a day. Like, um, is this how it's like, supposed it's to be? Going well. Is and, and and one of those is because it runs like boring factory like precision where stuff just gets done as it's supposed to. They're doing the same boring things over and over. It's a machine that just keeps producing these results. And as a result, like the owner thinks they're doing something wrong because they have no frame of reference to even. But actually, they're they're like really strong operationally. And the other one, they figured out some really smart stuff, the owners. And then as the, all the challenge we all go through is like, how do you get that out of your head? So that it can be yep. replicated at scale and be done by other people. Well, I'm, you know, taking a selfie on Mount whatever. Um, but right. knowing that when I'm up there, like things are being done as they're supposed to be done. So let's let's start with, uh, if you don't mind, um, pillar number one. You mentioned that pillar like, number one strategy. Let's talk about yes. how operation shows up as like as an actual kind of strategy issue or how those kind of things relate. Yeah. So pillar one of six guys. So buckle up. I want to dive deep into like, these are the six core pillars that every business I've ever seen that has a scalable, sustainable foundation has dialed in their operations across these six core pillars. If you are lacking in any one of these pillars, you have a shaky house of cards. With all six, you have scalable growth. So pillar number one is strategy. And this is really where we get into the energetic black hole. And I love what like the the dichotomy that you just drew between those two businesses. What business two has is a strategy. It feels boring because they're showing up and they're just delivering on the strategy every single day. Business number one is chaos because the visionary has these incredible, like the CEO, they've got these incredible ideas. They're throwing these ideas out but they have no way of reverse engineering those ideas into an actual executable reality. The gap there is strategy. Like you said, anybody can have good ideas, but strategy is actually how disciplined are we when it comes to sticking to those ideas? Like when we set a goal for ourselves, are we actually going to stay the course and stay the path to get there? And have we actually reverse engineered cool we we figured out point b like whatever we want 500k months whatever we figured out point b but have we actually reverse engineered how we are going to get there or are we just shooting in the dark all the time 
I call it the spaghetti against the wall strategy. Like yeah. we're just going to come up with a million ideas every week and every month. We're going to throw them against the wall and then we're going to see what works. The problem with it, Frankie, is that your team in that environment is perpetually reactive because there's no way to be proactive if the strategy is changing all the time. Yeah. They're super demotivated because every time they show up and they give their all to something, you pivot directions or you change ideas and then all of their work goes to waste. Yeah. And it's super overwhelming because you have a team that's trying to row really hard in 10 directions. And if you have a boat that rows in 10 directions, everybody's working their ass off. People are working really, really hard, but the boat goes nowhere. And that's where we get the energy black hole. Like you are pouring an insane amount of time and energy. Your team is pouring an insane amount of energy. Why is the business not growing? Why is it not moving? Why are we still at this plateau? It's because you're lacking a single direction and a single focus that you can put all of that energy behind. And when you're constantly pivoting and you lack that clear strategy, all that energy is just getting diluted and being sent in a hundred places. Yeah. Which by the way is, uh, is a normal function of usually when you're, when you graduate stages, like for me, I, I mean, I don't know about yeah. you, but the, the best operation stuff I actually learned hadn't was not at all in any agency space. It's from like getting to see the inside of how the top law firms function and then realizing like ninety five percent of this shit is the same as what I'm doing, right? Like they they deliver legal services and I deliver marketing services, but other than that one little nuance, like we're doing the same. Yeah. We still we both have to onboard. We both have to right. like communicate. We both have to like right. build employees, teams, and systems. Like I, 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 I feel like the the best stuff I learned was there. And and you know one of the things is when you start in stage one, where you're a single solo operator, you can be extremely limber. You can like you yes. can try one idea one week and the next and the next, and that works yeah. really really well as a as a solo when you can just try things and there you don't have to ask anybody's permission. You don't have to move. But when you got a team of fifty and they see you like showing up to the meeting, like all right. For the 27th consecutive week, we're going to do some different shit than last week. And yes, uh, exactly. And I've been that guy. And what you find is yeah. like, as you mentioned, is that the side effect is your team. <laughs> they're not they don't hate you, but they're very demotivated because they don't they don't feel like they're going anywhere. They don't feel like they're doing anything. And yeah. so, yeah. you know, you often have to like scale it down and focus on the less but better. What are the boring things done over and over that get us there? Let's talk. Pillar number two, girl. Leadership. Mm. Ah, uh, this is everyone. So I'm not calling anybody out before we get into this. Let's just right. say that. Call out me. We um, can make this an <laughs> uh, Here's what I'll say. If you are underwhelmed by your team, if you are looking at your team, you're like, God damn, can't these people just think for themselves? Why are they coming to me for everything? Why does it feel like I perpetually have B players? Why am I constantly churning my team out? Let's just look at the data. If there's, If you have a problem with one person, then it's probably an issue with that one person. If you are seeing a, the same thing repeated across your entire team and every new person that you bring in and every person that you have to fire, you're seeing the same issues again and again and again. There's literally only one common denominator and it's not your team, it's you, right? We as leaders mm -hmm. create the behaviors that we see from our team. And if there's a behavior that you don't like, it is literally your business holding up a mirror and offering you data that says, how am I unintentionally as a leader creating this behavior? Literally 80, 90% of the businesses that I work with and that I go in and audit have some sort of leadership bottleneck that is trapping the leader, the CEO in the day-to-day -day of the business. There is a reason that your team doesn't feel confident answering questions without you. There is a reason that they don't make decisions without you. There is a reason that they go to you for everything. These are things that we create as leaders that we can also, the good news is, take ownership for and then do something about. We yeah. can change our behavior. We can evolve so that our team truly is able to operate autonomously without us. If you can't figure that out as a leader, I don't care how good your SOPs are. You are never going to be able to remove yourself from the day-to-day -day because you've built a team that is dependent on you. Yeah. There's, there's a magic phrase. And I see that a lot when you start hitting stage three and uh, this, this was for me. And I, I, again, I learned my best stuff from law firms, but it was like uh, mm. the magic phrase of, Hey, do you got a minute? You got a minute. And and then when you have a team <laughs> of like 40 people or 50 people or more, you know, some of you guys get even bigger yeah. teams than that. But for me, my team yeah. is, you know, about 40 people. Um, I basically like have 40 people at least twice a day go, Hey, do you got a minute? You multiply it by like 80 requests. And then you multiply that by the number of clients who say, Hey, you got a minute. And there's suddenly there's this yeah. giant, like 
clusterfuck of all day long of just barrage of incoming and you don't realize it but you're you're the bottleneck in all of that and nobody can make decisions and you don't usually you don't trust other people to make those decisions so you want to have like a hand in everything and then everything slows down because of you and you just feel like everybody's incompetent around you but it's really you (laughs) let me give Um, you a, a very painful example of this i had a client they were doing 400k months it was an agency the COO was absolutely that person, right? Nothing on the back end of the business could move forward without him to the point that they literally had to turn off sales. They had turned them off by the time I was in there because sales couldn't bring any new clients through the door without him needing to personally handle everything. And he was absolutely maxed out. Within three months, we had gone from that situation to him literally getting like voluntarily fired from his own business because he realized that he didn't want to be in the day to day. We had completely escalated and elevated him out of everything. And he was able to like retire to a board of advisors, advisors position. Right. So it's people find themselves in, in that place of like, Oh, everything has to be done by me. And I'm here to tell you that it doesn't, you just need the operational backing to make that not the case, right? It's optional. There's a choice there. You just need to learn how to do differently. Yeah. And I find usually uh, when you hit that stage unknowingly, um, you're doing everything reactively, like people are bringing you shit. And and actually to get to that point, you had been very proactive, but now because you can't do everything yourself, it requires a team. And so you just react to everything incoming. And and 8020 says like, you know, the vast majority of it is doesn't, even contribute to the bottom line. Hey boss, can you I lost my password? Can you get me into this site? Hey, what, what, what yep. do you like the yellow or the green? And the reality is like, who cares? Like it doesn't make any fucking difference to the bottom line. Like I trust your judgment, just pick, you know, whatever color. And then what ends up happening is you, you spend all day like chipping away at trivial shit that doesn't move yep. the needle. And then the big important yep. shit, you're like, why can't we make head- headway in the big important shit? And almost yep. always I find you have to like, kind of almost take the reins back and I, uh, you know, I learned from lawyers, they would say manage by KPIs, where like, we need mm-hmm. to know like, where we're at on the important stuff. And KPIs, by the way, just so you guys know, aren't entirely sales numbers, everybody thinks that those are interchangeable, mm-hmm. but they're also delivery side, like, how quick are we getting people onboarding? How quick are we getting campaigns? What what numbers are we hit? How are we like, when's the last time we messaged that client? Are they happy with us? Yep. Those kind of things. Um, yep. Um, but if you, if you mismanage those things and, and almost always it just starts coming out reactively and you're just overwhelmed by the sheer amount of like, I don't want to say nonsense, but like tiny little pieces that don't really matter. So let's talk about pillar number three for you. It sounds like you got something you want to say. Let, let, go ahead. Well, I would just, I would just add like, let's just think about this mathematically. Cause you're absolutely right. Right. The goal of operations is to scale our company. The amount of shit that needs to get done in your business is an exponential curve. Every new client, every new team member, every new decision, like all of that just stacks and stacks and stacks. And there's just more and more stuff to get done every single day. That's growth. That's the reality. We can't do anything about that. But if everything is reliant on you, your time and energy is a fixed amount. There is only so many hours you have in the day. There's only so many good decisions you can make. There's only so much energy you can bring to bear in your business. And so where people break is at this equilibrium where the business is just demanding more from them than they can literally give. And at that point, guys, if you're there or if you feel like you're getting close to there, you have a couple of choices. You can try and ride this curve. That leads to burnout, would it recommend. You can cap the growth of your business or your business will cap it for you where you just flatline the business because you literally can't handle anymore. I've seen a lot of people do that. Or we get to team, you figure out how to delegate. You figure out how to genuinely not just get tasks off your plate, but genuinely transfer ownership to your team so that things can start to happen without you. It's a hard learning curve, but it's a skill. It's a skill like every other skill that you've learned in your business so far. You just got to show up to it, tackle the learning curve and figure it out. Just so you guys know, it's a skill that personally, um, I feel like is my weakest point in the whole thing, Mm. but you do get Mm. less awful at it over time. So for those of you guys who it's not like a a strength, um, you know, part of it is, is just even understanding what you're aiming for. Like a lot of times you're blind to the things that you're doing and you don't realize it. Like I said, it took for me seeing well-run law firms to go, oh, that's what the level past me looks like, right? It's like, I see how they're able to do more because the owner has been removed. So he can just show up once a week and say, hey, I got this one big idea that I want us to implement and give it to his team instead of being the, 
And it blew my mind because yeah. I would see like one of my mentors comes to mind is he uh, he spends most of his day like golfing and fishing and he would come up with ideas while golfing and fishing. Uh-huh. And yep. uh, and then, you know, he'd get off the boat with his like notepad and he fax it to the office and then he'd come in for a Friday meeting and like how we how we make it out with this new thing we're implementing. And it blew my mind that like, can you like, you know, they were doing about three and a half million a year, which he's since like, you know, tripled. Uh, but I'm like, really? Like you're five hours a day. I see you work the rest of the day. You're just like golfing it. Like, how can you do that? And obviously he was very operationally strong, but it took him as well, like 20 years to kind of figure it out. Um, right. Let's talk pillar number four communication. Cause this becomes, especially the bigger and bigger, the, the, team or a system you're building gets the more and more this becomes important when you got like just one you and five clients this may not be like a make or break detail but if you want to make that number 50 or 500 even as as you know some of our friends in this community have or you know some even past that um you don't get there without having some kind of like communication and usually this is at least in, in my experience an infrastructure thing like how do you even communicate amongst team members as well as how do you communicate yes. with um clients like those are almost two separate genres of the same kind of thing but if you don't have like a formulated way of doing that like it's going to be chaos yep and i and i would focus more on the latter right like communication with clients is overall pretty simple give them one channel don't let them stray outside the channel run everything through it that's honestly fairly easy to optimize what is hard is internal communication because let's just put it this way any time spent talking is time not spent doing. You can treat any time spent talking on a meeting, in Slack, after hours, right? Like how how often is your Slack channel blowing up right now? Let's be honest. How many meetings are you stuck in every single day? All of that time is time that's being taken up to talk about stuff as opposed to actually do stuff, do the things that will drive revenue and growth to your business. Now, there's a reason for meetings. There's a way to have good meetings. But at a baseline, in my experience, under operationalized businesses are just talking way more than they need to because they don't have any of the infrastructure that automates that communication. Let me give you an example in the agency space. So (laughs) I have seen so many agencies where they have like a daily client success huddle. And it started as like a 15 minute huddle with the solopreneur and their VA. And then they never changed it. And now they have a team of five and they have 30 clients. And now they're hopping on every single day. And that call was 15 minutes, but now it's two hours. And they're just running down the list of clients every single day saying, where are we at with this person? Where are we at with this person? What does this client need? Did that get done? Oh, we haven't gotten that done yet. Okay, please get that done. And then let's talk about it tomorrow, right? That meeting, guys, 100% unnecessary. Yeah. There is literally no part of that meeting that needs to happen. And you're spending an hour a day across five people, across five days a week, across 50 weeks a year to talk about things that are completely unnecessary when all of that time could be reallocated towards your account managers getting on client calls and upselling them towards your media buyers actually just optimizing ads. And so like how that manifests as far as profit, when I ran an agency, The average account manager in our space can probably handle 30 to 40 client accounts. My account managers were handling between 80 to 100 accounts. I literally doubled the productivity of the team and as a business owner had half the labor costs because my team wasn't spending time talking. They were spending time just doing their job. Yeah. Yeah. And I'll tell you just uh, one extreme like kind of personal anecdote. And I think anybody who's kind of worked for some big corporate shithole company has experienced Mm -hmm. the extreme of this. I, uh, in a former life, used to work for the Ford Motor Company, and I was like like middle management, yay me, um, which was my mom's dream come true. And I remember there were meetings about meetings where you reviewed the meetings notes from the last meeting and planned for the right. next meeting and scheduled meetings. And it was meetings like literally about fucking meetings. And yeah. I feel like everybody liked that because, you know, they all got paid their cushy salaries, but none of it actually drove right. the business forward. If you're working for a big corporate kind of shithole thing, then you may just your goal, maybe just survive till Friday. And so you sure. can get drunk. That was my goal at the time. If I could make it till sure. Friday at uh, five sure. o'clock. But it's a very different thing if it's your company and you're actually trying to drive revenue forward. And this is your baby and this pays your livelihood. And yeah. so and I it's think time you're paying for. 
Uh, yeah. Like, like Ford corporate is paying all their people to sit around and have meetings about meetings. Yeah. You're paying your people to show up to a call to talk about things that don't need to be talked about. Right. It's literally money that's leaking out of your yeah. pocket because there's a giant gap in your system that the right systems, the right infrastructure can completely eliminate. Yeah. Yeah. And, and not only that, like just getting accurate data to like make intelligent decisions was, was pretty yeah. much non-existent. So half the meetings were um, like, I can remember just like, just to give you guys an idea and we laugh at this stuff, but I tell you there's, there are miniature versions of that in your agency. There is still in mine, you know, like I'm not like throwing stones at anybody, but um there was, a, there was a guy who used to check quality parts at the customer's plant and make sure because we were having issues with some things. And he would write all the, the issues on a piece of paper and then he would fax it into the office and then there would be a person who would transcribe it. And then there would be another person who would take that data and type it into an Excel sheet. And then there would be a person who would generate reports off of that Excel sheet. And it would take a fucking week just to figure out what's happening with the shit which in the customer plant in this case was like literally a half mile up the road. Like you could drive to it in 30 seconds and be there. Right. And right. yeah, it took us a right. week to find out what was going down, down the street. And yeah. like the communication was almost comical the, the way they did it. And I promise you there yeah. are little versions of that in your agency now. Um, yes. Let's talk pillar number five. This is systems. I, love it. I think this is the one that um, is at least for me personally, it's, it's the hardest one to do because it's, it's a, mm -hmm. It's it's an elephant that has to be eaten one bite at a time. It's a it's a big yeah. process, but once it's done and in place, like man, does it fucking make your life easier? But let's talk systems. Yeah, yeah totally. It's the perfect tee up, right? Because the the number one system that I would recommend every single agency have is the same exact system that's going to solve all your communication issues. Like we can laugh about your example of the Ford Motor Company and be like, oh my God, that's crazy. But the same exact thing is happening in your agency. Like if we give a very tactical example, let's talk about a client issue, right? In the, in the use case of an agency that has that daily huddle, client has an issue. Client tells account manager they have an issue. Account manager brings that back to the daily huddle. Everything has to be talked about. So now that issue has gotten assigned out to a media buyer or something, or let's be honest, you, the CEO, have to be on that meeting to tell people what to do because you're the only person that tells people what to do. So now that has to go around the meeting. Media buyer goes away. They go fix the issue. They come back the next day. Then they talk about it again. Has it been resolved? Yes, it has. Okay, now it gets handed to the account manager. Account manager can turn around and hand it back to the client, right? Yeah. That's, the, that's the same thing. That's the same thing, right? That could take a week. It could take two weeks. Oh, we're not there with it yet. Okay, we'll try again tomorrow. Oh, you did it, but you didn't do it right. So now let's try it again, right? All of that is just time talking about what's getting done instead of doing the thing. The system that solves all of that I call it the single source of truth. The less sexy name is a project management system. Yeah. And before you ask, there's not a right system. No, I've I seen a, all work. I've seen seven, eight figure agencies. Can in I Sunday just have a little rant up. before you finish Please, on that? Please, go for it. Because go I get it. asked that too all the time. And I'll tell you, this is my answer and it's not going to change. The right project management software is the one you're going to fucking use. The end. Anyways, Correct. continue. Please. That's it. That's it, right? Literally. <laughs> so it doesn't matter which one you use. It matters how you use it and how it's set up. But the right single source of truth, one of the primary functions is task management. So in that exact same situation, client issue, client has an issue. Account manager writes it as a task in the project management system, assigns it to the media buyer. Media buyer sees the task, gets notified that it's there, knocks it out, marks it as complete. Account manager sees that notification, turns around and hands it to the client. There's no meeting. There's no like running around that task five times saying, hey, is it done yet? Is it done yet? Is it done yet? 100% of that communication is automated by the system itself. And it's, it's kept transparent, it's centralized. Mm -hmm. So if there's a breakdown in that handoff, you can go into the single source of truth and see exactly what happened, who dropped the ball, where did this get stuck? Why wasn't it done, right? All of that is there for you. So that as a CEO, you don't have to be personally showing up to every single meeting to know what's happening in your own business. All of that is being stored in a system that where we get to our final pillar data is actually going to automatically display the data that you need to see around what's getting done, what's not getting done, how is the business performing? Yeah. So if you guys are having a communication issue, it's also and compounded by the fact that you have a systems issue. And so 
I think the final thing I'll say about systems here, Frankie, is that when I say operations, your immediate thought is systems. What is really, really important for your listeners to understand is that, guys, systems is one sixth of what operations is. Yeah. Operations is mm-hmm. all of the pillars that we just covered. And so if you're saying, I don't need operations because I don't need systems, you're missing five sixths of the picture. And I guarantee that one of these pillars is struggling because otherwise you wouldn't be feeling as stuck in your business as you are. Yeah. Just to uh, to add a little bit on, on what you were talking about with systems, what I've found is uh, when you have a smaller, like leaner agency, like I have this actually with a couple of clients now, I'm a little bit guilty of this, where some of my clients will message me on Facebook, others on Instagram and and others email me and it's and and if you're not building a giant empire it's like it's actually not a big deal at all but if you start putting zeros on the number of clients you have that you manage like that alone can fuck your entire system and so you mentioned the word centralized and that's the real key to me is is with the whole yep. project management is like we just actually put this in in our real estate business and I, I wish I could tell you I was smart enough to come up with this but I just paid for it and had somebody install it for me that was that was the real truth of it but it, it's amazing because we have a CRM in the case of uh, mm-hmm. real estate. It, it's it's a lesser, it's one we don't use in the agency space called Podio, but it's set up so that all my real estate, like, so a lead comes in, they're immediately added to the database. Every like piece of information about their house, how much it costs, every conversation with a seller is stored there. It gets passed to my acquisition guy. He updates all of like the conversations if it gets offered a contract we put the details of the contract as well as any analysis we run and it's all stored there so like even if that person calls us back six months later we can like pull up their file and see every like the entire history and it gets passed over to any contracts we sign then also we have all our title companies stored in there we have our buyers stored in there all in one place and they've set it up so uh like literally with a push of a button i can get real-time data i can see like we have this many leads and we have this many, this is where this is at, um, this many contracts. And because of it, I'm able to like identify the entire health of a business in like one single frame. And it takes me 30 seconds to do that. And it was a lot of work to get it to that point. Obviously they spent a quarter million of their own money testing it, but man, does it make life fucking easy that I don't have like, you know, a Facebook to check and Instagram, blah, blah, blah. It's like, it's all just there in one place. I can find out everything that's going on. And this is kind of what you want your systems and your data to look like is where you can just like, you should be able to like tell the health of your business in one single screen with a couple of clicks of a button or get it as close to that as humanly possible where you can, um, you know, like, and then you can start making intelligent decisions from it. Like, Hey, why, why are our leads down? But we have so many of these, why don't we have any contracts? What's going on here? Or, Hey, it seems like we have deals in place, but they're not closing. Like what's the hold up here. You can start like intelligently solving the problems that actually matter. Yep, 100%. And if we're going back to the the definition of operations, right, optimizing time and energy, knowing that that's possible, because it is right, single source of truth, what you just described, Frankie, is literally the system that I recommend agencies use for exactly the same function, bring everything together, have it all centralized, right? Knowing that that's possible. What that means is every single second, and every single ounce of energy that you as a founder are investing in figuring out what's going on in your business is wasted time is wasted energy because it should be as easy as looking at a dashboard and understanding that in 30 seconds. And so if you're taking more than 30 seconds to do it, you are losing out on all the time and energy that could be reinvested into doing what you do best, namely growing your damn business, driving the next wave of revenue, figuring out the next strategic partner, launching the next like campaign, right? The opportunity cost of your time and energy being stuck in the weeds of your company is unbelievable. Yeah. And so when people ask me like, but how does operations, why is it ROI? Why should I invest a bit? How does it drive the money pipeline? You're the money pipeline. And if all of your time and energy is being sucked into just managing the day-to-day of your business and figuring out what the hell is going on, then you are losing out on all of the revenue that you could be generating if 90% of your day was just spent doing that. Yeah. Even just sometimes like, cause we talk, we talked about this at the start is like, it can show up as a sales bottleneck where if you're the yep. single salesperson in your company and you, you know, the sales process is a little bit different each, each time and you're still doing like sales calls and people are booking two weeks out, like half the time by the two weeks out, they go, who are you? And what is this about again? Right. right? And as where if right. you had like yep. tighter operations where instead of two weeks, that was two hours or mm-hmm. even like less than that, where you're getting on them, like as soon as they say they're interested, 
Um, yep. You'll notice like a, a marked improvement in your sales and it won't be because you like actually got better at your pitch at sales. Or your offer Correct. or anything. Just, Correct. just strike while yep. the iron's hot because you have the operational efficiency to do that. And so yep. I definitely see exactly. like a lot of that where people are just kind of winging it. Like I see it in a lot of yep. six figure agencies that the sales and lead process is winging it. And I wish I could tell you guys like I'm super smart and figured any of this out. Usually, like I said, most of the stuff I've like had mentors. Um, just funny little story on that. I actually had a, a conversation with Ryan Dice at Traffic and Funnels. He was about to go on stage and he was in the corner of the room and nobody saw him. So I went over to talk about some stuff like I'd seen him the year before and I was telling him about some stuff I was working on and just gave him a little update. And he told me they own 40 companies four zero, And most of those are like at the bare minimum seven figure companies. And I said, how the hell do you manage 40 companies? And he said, Monday morning, he sits in a meeting, the meeting's 90 minutes long, and they go through and they look at the numbers and the health of each business, and they make decisions in two or three minutes about each business, and they just go through them rapid fire, business one, what are we doing here? Okay, business two. And they do that each Monday, once a week. And and if you wow. have this kind of operational efficiency, which obviously he does, um, you can manage that kind of like the chaos. Just think about all the teams in the system. And some of these are like um, physical products. So there's like logistics of shipping things and upsells and sponsors and all those things. And he's able to just like look at the health of a couple of charts and graphs and make a decision in yeah. two, three minutes and improve that business week by week by week by week. And that's, I, I'm not saying like you guys have to bring it to that level because you're not, most of us here aren't trying to build 40, you know, multi-million dollar businesses. But if you can just have the one thing you have be close to that, what you'll find is you can spend a lot more time on the beach. You can spend a lot more time going hiking. You and, and it's better for your fucking clients because like shit gets done as it's supposed to. It's kind of boring for them, right? Like it, it should be this yeah. boring, predictable kind of machine. Um, yeah. Any any final thoughts before I, I we we give you a giant plug and tell everybody where to go? Well, it's beautiful because you you just covered pillar number six, right? Which is data. The final thing I'll say, I think you covered it beautifully, Frankie. As far as why is data important and what should it look like. The final thing I'll say is as far as why most people never are able to scale out of the weeds of their business is because trying to scale out of the weeds without data feels like walking next to a cliff with a blindfold on. If you're yeah. starting to escalate yourself out, step out, be less involved, delegate, not see everything that's happening, not be personally involved in everything, but you don't have any way of seeing that the right things are still getting done this is your fucking baby. You're not going to just walk out the door and leave it in somebody else's hands. There has to be that visibility piece where you're able to still ensure clients are being served. Business is still growing. If there's a problem, I can see it and then I can go in and I can fix it. And so most business owners that I know will actually keep themselves trapped in the weeds of the business because it's their source of visibility and safety to just be able to look around and know that everything's okay. So I'm telling you guys again, that that's a choice. There is a way of scaling yourself out of your business where Ryan Dice can have 100% confidence in the health and well-being of 40 businesses with 90 minutes a week. That's possible, right? You just need to have the right systems in place. And the final thing I'll say about this, Frankie, because you said, uh, you know, you didn't build your single source of truth. You had somebody come in and do it. Guys, if we're getting to this, the end of this episode and you're like, well, fuck, I don't want to build any of this. I get that I have operational bottlenecks. I get that there's solutions here, but I like the idea of learning how to fix these things is literally nails on a chalkboard. The fantastic news for you is that it's not your job. Let me say it again. It is not your job. Your job is to be the CEO and visionary and founder of your business. It is not your job to figure out how to build a ClickUp dashboard and a data dashboard and rebuild the meetings in your company and fix the team hiring processes and have, right? Like that is your operator's job. There's a whole class of human beings out there that I try and represent who really fucking love systems and data and SOPs. Yeah. And we want to build that for you. Your yeah, job just is to add just find I us. There are exceptions, but for the most part, I, I find people largely fall into one of two camps. One is yep. that they love being the, the face of the brand and promoting and marketing. I fall into that category personally. Like I could yep. just talk about the shit all day or they fall into the, the operations. Like I just wish people would just hire me and I could just do SEO all day because I'm really fucking good at SEO and like wish I didn't have to sell it and promote it. Both of those are operations challenges in different ways. But, you know, what, what John is talking about here is like, you know, 
really like what we would call like doubling down on your strengths and and everything else, yeah. you know, making somebody else's job because it took me a lot of years to realize like there's other people who love the shit you hate. And and, yeah. and so you think like, you know, a lot of times like you hate it. And so you're like, you're casting this awful work upon someone else, but there's somewhere mm-hmm. out there. Like, you know, I, I still check in with my, like my, one of my Facebook ads guys, who's, you know, been with me for like two years. And I say like, cause I hate the Facebook ads manager with a passion. And I'm like, are you still having fun with this? And he's like, dude, I love it. I'm learning so much. This is so cool. Yep. And like there, there's yep. ways for you guys to build this where people are complimentary to the things you're not enjoying. In fact, there's no rule that even says you have to be the face of the brand. Like you can actually build an entirely like invisible kind of uh, expertise yep. business if you want to. Like you can actually be yep. totally invisible in that process and just have you know systems and teams and processes on both ends. But mm-hmm. I usually find the reason I say that is for most of you guys, I'd say probably about 75% of you, you're like me, where you like, you like talking about the things you do. You like sharing cool ideas. You like, you know, showing people what's possible with digital marketing, but that doesn't mean you like want to log into the website and create the backlink and your password is never fucking complicated enough for these websites. Like, no, you need the Batman symbol and an upside down question mark and, you know, some kind of Chinese character for it to pass. Are these, and then you got the robot telling you like, are these really motorcycles and mountains and crosswalks and all that kind of bullshit? This is challenging for you, I can tell. (laughs) and, And anyways, point being is that like, you can totally remove yourself from all that stuff. And, yeah. and have like and a better me, business for it. Right. That's the key, right? Because most people refuse to delegate operations because it's annoying, right? It's annoying, but I can still do it. It's annoying, but I can outwork the problem. It's annoying, but that's not a big enough reason for me to spend my own money and my business's money to fix the annoying. I'm just going to keep up showing up and doing it. Guys, it's not annoying. It is, but that doesn't matter. You're going to outwork it. It's expensive because there are people like me out there who not only want to do this work, they can do it faster, they can do it better. The result is actually going to be a better outcome done in less time. And all of the time and headache that you would have invested into figuring this thing out can now go and turn around and drive growth into your business. You are losing revenue by forcing yourself to learn operations, by forcing yourself to wear hats that you truly hate and that you are bad at, right? Versus delegating that out for a fraction of the cost and then taking all of that time that you get back and reinvesting it where you are actually great at driving growth to your business. I'll tell you the other reason I know a lot of people don't is because they reach an income goal and then they're stoked about hitting it, but then they're like kind of running operationally ragged and they're trying to like hoard and keep 100% of it. But I always look at it like, would you rather own 50% of a watermelon or 100% of a grape? And if you want to be the hundred percent of a great person, then like you keep all that shit to yourself. But if you want to be like fifty yeah. percent of a watermelon, which is usually a better strategy, um, then you know do that. So let's talk about uh, folks who want to get more goodness, and I'll make sure to put some links uh, for you guys. But where where are they going besides Facebook? Where else can they connect with you? My website, guys, is spyglassops.com. So you can check me out. You can check out what it is that we do. We help you solve this problem. That's the easiest way of saying it. If you don't have an operator, we have solutions for you. If you do have an operator, but you don't, that person isn't doing all of the things that I just described and you don't know how to level them up, we've got operations coaching programs. If you don't even know which of these bottlenecks is alive and well within your business, we have audits that we can run for you, right? So if you have any inkling of like, damn, I might have some work to do on operations, just book a call with us. We will full on break it down for you, clarify exactly why you're seeing what you're seeing in your business and how we can help you fix it. Cool. I'll make sure to put some links for you guys and uh, uh, I'll make sure by the time this goes live that John is part of our community so she can answer questions for you guys. But so many of you guys, I'm telling you, if you fix your operations, you're like, your life will go from like, um, it's not easy to measure because I mentioned those two agencies in the beginning doing, you know, like 175K each. I always say the bank account scoreboard is one scoreboard that everybody pays attention to. It's the easy one to keep track of. But the, the hidden one is the energy, like how much and yeah. energy, like when when you're not energy efficient, it's measured measured in loss of sanity, which I've yeah. experienced many times yeah. in this business. Yeah, and loss of joy too, right? Yeah. Like, yeah, maybe your business is going fine, but you're showing up all day, every day, fourteen hours grinding to make it the grinding. case. You're spending a hundred percent of your time to get a hundred percent of the grape, 
versus there's people out there who have 50% of the watermelon and they chicken on the watermelon for 30 minutes a week. Yeah. And they're spending the rest of their time living the lives that they dreamed of living. Yeah. And I think for you guys, you know, go to the pool, go to the beach, or just sit around watching Netflix for once. It's kind of an amazing feeling when you get your operations <laughs> in order and you can just like watch a movie in the middle of the day and you know that know that there's no fires to put out like so yeah um yeah. anyways uh this has been awesome thank you so much jonna and uh, you're very welcome uh, thanks for having me on frankie this is super fun guys if you like this video you're also going to want to grab some free bonuses which you can get at our website beyond agency profits to make it easy for you i've put the links to it in the description of this video as well as pinned in the top comment and we've got a couple of awesome things this is what you'll get after you sign up you get some of our best training how we're closing clients over loom videos how we sometimes sign clients that is not a misprint for under five us dollars uh, how to demonstrate your value in like amazing ways, trainings, how to have your clients write the best copy of your life, how we're closing without phone calls, campaigns that we've generated for clients for, that have done over $100,000, as well as scripts you can use to get conversations going with clients in under 10 minutes. All you got to simply do is go there, enter your name and email address, and then this is what you'll see on the other side. So if that's interesting to you, make sure to click the links below and I will see you on the other side.